Welcome back to our video series for Release Control 6.1. So far we have installed Release Control and set up some of the um, release elements related to that. And in this video we are going to start setting up the integrations with other tools. For Release Control to really um, help you it really needs to integrate with other products and other tools. And in release control, we use the uh, plugin tool in order to make that happen. So we are going to set up the SBM plugin. And what we're going to do is follow this guide to, if you'd like to come out here so you can see it, uh, you just wanna go out to help.serena.com and you can go to release control and then underneath plugins, you'll see the SBM plugin guide down here. And that's the one that we're gonna look at. So to get started, we have to do the configuration. The easiest way to get there is to open up SBM configurator and then go down to the release control tab. And right in the middle is a link to the provider administrator. So if we click that, we will come out here these are the out-of-box uh, plugins that are installed with release control. We have one for Dimensions, one for SBM, and one for SDA. And today we are going to set up the SBM copy. At this top level, you'll see this is the connection to that plugin. And then underneath that, we have different configurations that point to different pieces of SBM. So if we had more than one SBM server, we could point to each one of them and things like that. So I only actually have one, so I'm going to delete this one. I'm not, I don't have this sample uh, process app set up, so I'm just going to delete it. I'm not using that. And in your system, if you don't have dimensions or SDA, you could delete those too and just get them out of your system. All right, so for now, we will set up our release control sample applications. These are the ones that came and were installed automatically when we did all of our other release control setup. So we'll just update that configuration. Now at the top is the server level of configuration. So you can change the name and description. It doesn't show anywhere. It doesn't really do anything, but you can change them if you want to. I guess if you had more than one SBM server, that might be handy so you could tell them apart. But for us, we'll just leave it like that. The only part that you have to change is the URL to SBM uh, web service. In my case, I have everything installed on one box, so I'm just going to put in my server name here and then take out this piece and you want to leave the rest of the URL exactly the same way as it is. Don't touch it. And actually if you don't change anything else in this whole thing it will work fine with the out-of-box system. Uh, if you want to know what all of those fields do and exactly what they customize you can come out to that plugin guide that we looked at earlier out on page 9 and then this is the description of all of those fields. So you can read through those. All right, for now, that's all we have to do, and we're just going to click on Update. And that's it. It's really that simple. The uh, plugin is installed, and it's ready to be used. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We'll come back over here to SBM. And, well, I guess I should look at that uh, provider one more time, just a little bit, just to give you the idea of what it's for. At the first piece, we have the execution properties. So this talks about where we are going to put tasks that are executed. So these are tasks. And in our case, these are going to be manual tasks. So anything that has to be manually completed are going to be stored in the project that we have defined here. And when we scroll down a little bit, is the request project. So this is where we define the project where all of our requests are stored. So these are requests like, you know, build me a server, upgrade this, do this, wh whatever it is. These are where your requests that are coming in um, go. And you'll see here we have a name and description, and those actually are shown in the tool to the users. So I'll show you where those are seen.
and the same is up here for this one so you can see those all right so let's come back out here to SVM and I'll show you where it is um, first we are going to attach some requests so for just for fun let's go out and add a couple of requests this is the request project that comes with release control and this is one that we're going to be using so I'm going to jump out here and just add one uh, let's see my sample request and I think I already have a few out there so I'm just gonna stick a number on this one okay and we'll say submit all right so that's out there all right so let's try to actually use our plugin so I have an example release package started. If we open that one up, we can see it. All right, so on the request tab, that's where we can link to the requests that were created earlier. So this is basically explaining why do we have this release package? Why are we doing a release? What's happening? So that is what we're going to link to our release package. So we're going to edit our list of requests and we'll say plus. Now over here I could have requests that come from dimensions or release control. Right now I don't have dimensions set up so we're just going to stick with the release control sample. If we jump over to our configuration you'll see that those are coming from our dimensions and then from our SBM integrations all right so I'm gonna use our sample one. Oh, one one more thing I forgot to point out while we were here this is the name that we saw earlier and you'll see the tooltip that popped up that's the description so that was inside of here in our request area this was the name and this was the description in the pop-up so that's where those show okay so now we can choose which project we are looking for for our requests the sample only has one project but you can build that out if you want to and we don't have very many so I'm just gonna search Oh yes, yeah, I did have some. So we do have four examples out there now. Uh, you can narrow it down by searching if you want to, and you can also search over here by different, uh, different fields. We will just pick this one that we just made, and we'll add this request. So now it's added to our list, and we can say close. And when we open our release package, it will now show us the list down at the bottom. So here's our request, and then there's our request that's linked to it. All right, the other piece that we set up was the tasks. So let's do one of those two. All right, we got deployment tasks. We're going to edit our list of deployments. And again, when we click plus, we have a lot of different options. Those, again, are listed in here. Those are our different choices. And for us, we are doing the manual deployment task. And there's the name and the description again. So when we come here, we see the name. And if we hover, we get the description. So I'm going to click that and pick one. Um, let's see. So this is a manual task. Let's see. We're going to say, I don't know, we'll do something silly. Verify, verify disk space, <laughs> which you could probably script, but we're just looking for an example for our task. Uh, you can give it a description and then an action. So right now what we're doing is defining the manual task that will be created when it's time for that manual task to be run. We're not actually creating a task right now. We're just defining what the manual task will look like when it is created later. So when that happens, we are going to create a new task. And then that new task is going to be the task that gets pushed through the process. And when we create that task, we have to choose which project where it's going to get stored. We only have one project, so that's easy enough. We also get to choose which submit transition we're going to use. And if it fails, which 
uh, transition are we going to use for a retry? And if somebody cancels the task, which transition are we going to use? Oh, we don't really have a good one set up. We'll, we'll just use retry. All right. And down at the bottom, we get to choose which environments this task will run on. You know, sometimes a task only happens um, for one environment. If it's a special task, you know, or something like that, you could uncheck these and say this only happens in the dev environment. Or you can say, you know, QA or whatever. We'll pick them all and say save. So now our task is in our list here, and we can see it's going to run on each environment. And we click close. And our release package now has our task in here. So that is the basics of it. That's how it works. And um, if you want to, I guess we could show you how the task um, happens too. Right now we're in the accept stage for our release package. But if we accept this, Okay, now we're in our ready to deploy stage, maybe, and, and we can see it's going to go to the dev system, right? We can say, go, let's start our deployments. Right here, it's creating those tasks and, and getting them ready. We refresh, we can see it here. So we can see that our task is going to the dev environment and it's pending. It needs an action from us before it can continue. So if we click on it, this will go out to the SBM system that we configured in our uh, plugin over here. So out here in our task area, we told it which table, which tells it the project that it's going to go to and gives information about where the task is going to be stored. So now when that opens, now we're actually in the task itself and we're in the pending state so if we start our task we're going to say okay who's going to work on this task Dan Dan can work on it now since I'm an administrator I can I can push this task right on through so I'm just going to say that it's complete Okay, and it's done successfully. Now if we go back over to our release package and refresh, we will see that the package is complete. And we'll see, it, it still thinks it's deploying, but if we refresh, it will come back and it will tell us that our deployment is complete. So now we're in the dev environment and our deploy is complete. And we can keep pushing it on through the system. But the point is, down here, we can see that our task is here. It shows it's completed, and we can see the execution date and time. All right, so thank you for watching. In our next video, we're going to set up the Dimension CM integration and get that one working. Thank you.